Alright, so what you see on my screen here is my own personal AWS account. Um, uh, trying to stick to free tier usage here, but uh, the NAS gateway that I have named here, which is actually the AWS storage gateway, um, requires quite a large uh, EC2 instance to be able to run. If you try to use a, a T2 micro, it looks like it's gonna work but it just never works so anyway I'm gonna try to document as much as I can here and uh, delete all this before I end up with a large bill because uh, between the NAS gateway and this file share that I created uh, this one here this 300 gig file share that I created on FSX is probably <laughs> I'm assuming they charge you for the whole 300 gigs, whether you use all 300 gigs or not. So thin provisioning, I don't think applies here, like as in S3. So this this share is estimated costs, you know, with very little throughput, around $54 a month. Yeah. Um, so I got to delete this quickly. The other thing is um, I have AD managed here as well so I had to create a uh, AD managed directory um, in AWS in order to test FSX and I also have a, uh, <coughs> a DFS cluster uh, yeah that's a cluster uh, set up between two availability zones my US East 1A and uh, 1B and uh, I'm using uh, my management VM which is Windows Server 2012 uh, Enterprise or Data Center Edition whatever the AMI is that Amazon has um, but I, I, I'm using it as an iSCSI target because I haven't found another way to you know create a cluster without shared storage and you know EC2 you can't attach the same disk to the same in to multiple instances it can only be attached to one instance so I haven't found a way around that yet but uh, but it's pretty cool it's, it, it actually works um, I could jump around a little but this is this is my management uh, VM and right here is one of the cluster nodes that I created for the DFS cluster you could see this cluster has uh, two nodes they're both up and I have created one uh, DFS root on this cluster you can have multiple routes like we do in our production environment uh, in ED1 and WD1 and for the purpose of this test I'm just uh, gonna show options for you know moving or forklifting if I will uh, NetApp or Windows file shares to Amazon seamlessly by maintaining the same name and relative path and all of that good stuff that users complain about when you migrate data for them. Um, what's interesting here is uh, my DFS namespace is a combination of uh, the, the, the referrals here, the one referral that you see right now, this group C referral is using the storage gateway. So it's actually, you know, the gateway appliance, um, which is backed by an S3 bucket, but it's set up in my DFS namespace as a referral. So when you go browse that namespace, you uh, can see under groups here the group C if you look at this properties on this and the DFS you can actually see that's the referral and that is actually in my bucket here it's an S3 bucket I can show that by I, I have nothing in this directory right now but if I go over to my S3 bucket right now and I look in this this folder that I created TUS test it's empty 
and if I go back here and create a I don't know, text document and um, won't be able to see that through the S3 browser but uh, not the browser but the console so you can see I created this file here and if I go back to my bucket uh, and refresh there it is it shows up it's pretty cool uh, so I mean if you don't need high performance and you're looking for something cheap but you want to be able to front end it with a familiar user link this is an option, you know, to combine DFS with storage gateway. Not exactly uh, the primary use case for the storage gateway, but I figured it was worth showing. Now for the FSX, uh, what I did here was I created a 300 gig volume, like I said before, and this is costing me uh, to the tone of $54 a month right now without backups. Um, you could see here you know information about it uh, the network inter information the active directory that it's associated with which is my directory service it's this is the same if you look at this this is the same directory service uh, where is it yeah, right there the 40d0f the 40d0f that's my directory this is the DNS name that they associated with this uh, file share um, and it created a uh, an ENI here an elastic network interface and gave it an IP address and registered it to that uh, domain and just like a file share only you know you don't have any control over what you call it it's basically limited uh, so putting DFS in front of it gives you some flexibility with that. If you look at uh, the actual share on my management server, I think I have it right here somewhere. Yeah, so this is the actual share um, or if you browse the network or the DNS name you could see share. I did not create that share. When I created that volume or that share it created that default name I don't know that you can change this so what I did was I went into that share and I created some directories for accounting HR marketing research and so forth and then in my DFS I have one of these set up as a referral so let me just show you that uh, let's see yeah this one here so this referral here you could see is pointing to that FSX share that I created and it's creating to it's pointing to a subdirectory so I can carve this up and have it shared by multiple departments and front end it with DFS and that's pretty cool um, just to go back to my DFS solution real quick I mean you could see that uh, I'm trying to follow you know all of the high availability best practices I have the node 1 in uh, US East 1A node 2 is in US East 1B it, it's a stretch cluster but DFS on a stretch cluster requires shared storage and like I said before you can't do that with EC2 and um, EBS but you can do it with iSCSI so for now I just on my management server I have the iSCSI target uh, service or feature running you could see it right here this is the virtual disk that I created um, and I've exported it to um, both of these initiators uh, that are running on my uh, DFS nodes uh, and then you know, I was able to use that as a clustered one so yeah the iSCSI server is a single point of failure right now but I'm still thinking of ways to get around that but anyway um, let's see what else can I show here uh, 
I'll show how easy it is to create another referral. Um, just going back to this example here. Uh, wait, uh, getting lost. So I already created one for HR. Let's go in and do accounting. Oh, and other thing is um, with um, the storage gateway, there's no granular permissions. You know, it's it's a bucket on the back end, so you're restricted based on bucket policies. And and I haven't seen a way to set it up so that you can have certain users read only access and and other users read write. Um, haven't found a way to do that yet, but with FSX, it's it supports all of the native SMB features that Microsoft supports because it's technically running on Windows, and uh, you know you can go in and set your granular NTFS permissions here, um, just like you could on a Windows uh, server. So I created these two groups, and ones for read-only, ones for modified. These are not inherited inherited so you can actually see here um, these were not inherited um, I broke inheritance and pretty much set the ACLs at that directory it allowed authenticated users to just see that folder but not drill down any deeper than that um, just like I would on you know a NetApp share or a Windows file server it's pretty cool um, but you can do that uh, but like I said with the S3 bucket, uh, if you look at this bucket here, uh, and let's look at the permissions on this guy here, this will be interesting, you see, even if I created a, um, even if I created a group and granted that group access, and it wouldn't it wouldn't list the group here it's only going to list each individual user so if another user were to, were to write to this right now it's wide open everyone has read write access to this because i didn't restrict it with group membership yet but you know you can end up with hundreds of users in the group in the in the ACLs and it's really just emulating which users have access to the bucket so this you know, I'm not crazy. I, I think they have some work to do here, unless I'm doing something wrong. But it does, you know, it does work, and it's pretty fast. So, um, anyway, for marketing, uh, I could show how I created the groups. Let's see. I have I'm trying to get used to this. This is uh, Active Directory Administrative Center. So that directory service that I created, you can't really manage it from here. You can just do certain things but there's not much you could do from here so you can see my directory and under actions I can't really I can't really do much right and this is just showing me some details about it but I can't manage it from here you know uh, in order to manage it you have to do that from a Windows instance such as my management server here and I've installed this feature um, on here the management pack or whatever it is and uh, this is how you manage the domain so I created an OU for group so I can actually go in and uh, create a new group for uh, um, marketing perhaps users let me modify that yeah this is I don't know I don't know if I can get used to this but you know I guess I will eventually if I had to uh, and another group I would use this one for modify so basically create those two groups and then 
I would go into here and this is where I would you know right now I don't think I changed anything with the permissions so this is default I had to pretty much add myself to this group that was created when the share was created uh, in order to have full control otherwise I'm just a, a user which has basically modify um, but I added if you look here the AWS delegated groups um, here I added uh, my admin account to that group it wasn't there by default so now I can go in and pretty much disable inheritance but convert that I don't want to lose the, that stuff and apply that and then I can add the groups that I just created for marketing there they are alright that would be read only this one would be modified for the authenticated users, we'll fix that in a minute. I'm gonna leave these two alone. I never use system, but uh, I don't know. I'll leave it there. Uh, where was I? I gotta fix the authenticated users here. I don't want all authenticated users to have modify. Right, we have to fix this and take away modify and just do read execute but this folder only So that would become my DFS referral, and if I do a my cackles on that, you could see uh, that's that's working out really well. That uh, is exactly how I would expect it to work. I can go back to my DFS server and over here. Um, create a new um, folder call it marketing add the target and then if I go back here now I have a marketing referral And uh, should have inherited the permissions. Yep, everything's still there. That's pretty cool stuff. So I could build out this DFS namespace however I need. You know, if I need five namespace roots, I can just create five namespace roots. And, uh, design it however I need it you know so that's it for now thank you have a nice day